As a longtime TEDster, I'm delighted to welcome you here. Your talks today will be given midway between the White House on one part of Pennsylvania Avenue and Capitol Hill on another part. On Inauguration Day, that's the path to power. We're in Penn Quarter, which is an area that was part of the Pennsylvania Avenue restoration plan. But there are other parts of Pennsylvania Avenue that did not get the historic care and attention this part got. So here's hoping that your TED Talks today will, in the best TED tradition, envision and innovate much needed solutions for this particular part of the world. A quick look at that plan's history begins, curiously, upstairs in our front pages gallery with a quote from Senator Daniel Patrick Moynihan. If a person goes to a country and finds the newspapers filled with nothing but good news, he can bet there are good men in jail. Seven months ago, in this very auditorium, we had an event that proved the truth of that timeless observation. We premiered John Stewart's movie, Rosewater. It's about a journalist who, after appearing in a sketch on The Daily Show, was imprisoned overseas for 118 days. By contrast, after our TED Talks here today, we can be assured that there won't be a jail cell or an inquisitor to greet even an ornery speaker. Lucky us, we can take our right to be wrong as a given. In other capitals around the world, many of them, on this very day, it's quite otherwise. A risky speech, a government bullet, or beating. Another word about Senator Moynihan, our patron saint here. He was a puckish, brilliant intellectual who had a hand in the birth of the museum. When he was a young bureaucrat in the John F. Kennedy administration, he was given the task of coming up with the Pennsylvania Avenue restoration plan. At that point, this area was filled with pawn shops, bucket of blood bars, boarded up stores, not a fitting place, our young president thought on his inauguration day to be the main street in the heart of American heritage. Senator Moynihan told us in a speech at the old museum that that issue of the new plan was one of the last that President Kennedy signed off on before his fateful trip to Dallas in November 1963. So for decades, Moynihan nudged politicos, great and small, to fulfill the slain president's dream. The president had wanted something that looked more like Paris. This was back in the days when the elegant young first lady was bedazzling even Parisians uh, with her elegant style. You, Moynihan told us in that speech, you are the last jewel in the crown. And so we wear that statement even today like a red badge of honor. And after the TED Talks, electric exchanges here, we invite you all to come see our 15 theaters and 15 galleries, which will show other clashes of ideas. Part of the freedom of expression that Americans chose when throwing off the yoke of King George III. It's unruly, but it's us. You will also see adventure stories that show the power of a lone individual to cut through the blooming, buzzing confusion of the world to shine a light in dark places. Injustice made clear is justice reborn, said one sage, after Nellie Bly pioneered investigative reporting. She went solo in the New York state of the 1880s into a horrific women's mental asylum. Her reports of the facts out of that led to spectacular reform. Now, Senator Moynihan famously said, everyone is entitled to his own opinions, but not to his own set of facts. That thought is contradicted in another part of the museum by the blustery comedian Stephen Colbert who says in a video, I don't like facts. You see, facts can change, 
but my opinions will never change. <laughs> the First Amendment is the sword and shield that protects all our facts and opinions. Unprecedented in its time, unique. It said there can be no government regulation of freedom of speech, of press and religion, of public assembly and petition. Let ideas contend in the free marketplace. Let the press, as an unofficial watchdog, also be one of the contenders in that marketplace. That was the founders' view. Today, we are the inheritors of that marketplace. And it is nevertheless true that in another of our galleries, the map of press freedom shows countries gone wrong with its own spreading mass of red. And just up the street at one of my alma maters, the Washington Post, they have a bureau chief in prison for, quote, propaganda against the establishment. Today, we here at the museum should renew our appreciation of the lone voices in trouble around the world. A free press, wrote Winston Churchill, is the unsleeping guardian of all the other rights free men prize. As each of us brings voice to what Ted is justly famous for, ideas worth spreading, we can underscore the shining import of that singular and still revolutionary set of ideas that all our dialogues are based on. The 45 words of the First Amendment towering in marble over Pennsylvania Avenue. The founder's best gift to freedom, and after 224 years, it is the ship that our ideas, Ted and beyond, still sail upon. Thank you and welcome.